Good afternoon. Welcome to Hartwood Turning in the Stable Studio. Today, <laughs> for my sins, I have got some gorgeous earworms. Well, one gorgeous earworm and two halyons. Uh, I'll just bring them in. <laughs> I think it says one o'clock. <laughs> there was a slight debate about the time earlier. Mark's trying to prove a point there, I think. So Mark the Gentleman Wood Turner, who is official timekeeper for today, obviously. Hi everyone. We, we have Pete from of the Twisted Trees. Hi everyone. Who is, who is my uh, pen expert who's going to guide me through the process along with Mark. I don't even have a kit to make a pen. So yeah, he didn't, he didn't. No, uh, <laughs> Pete, Pete gave up pen turning by by uh, sending the pen mandrel to some unsuspecting fool. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at him. <laughs> Paper's very clever. Oh, I've got a pen, Mendel. I'll send it to you. <laughs> Perfect. That's why I have it now. I'll show you later. And we have Joe Senior from Yorkshire Grip Fame. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, guys. Thanks very much for coming along to help and protect and guide and cajole and beat. And and you're on your own. <laughs> I'm on my own today. <laughs> so today we're going to turn uh, pens, guys. But you guys get to choose which I turn. Oh, that's maybe not a good idea. Have a look at this. This is the selection of pens. And I'll <coughs> use my. I'll use my. Uh, background. Oh, yeah. Put this in the background. Oh, yeah. well, the background. See, it's well, more than me. It's more than me already. So we have some acrylic or resin or whatever you want to call that stuff. I think it's resin, I suppose. This is pure resin, this one. This one is resin with. Uh, Pine cone through it. As is this one, I think. Yeah, that's got a bit of pine cone through it, just different colour. And this one is a an amalgamation of both. So it's resin and timber. And we have some other timber ones. That's just a, a blank. I'll talk about that in a minute. We have one, two, three, four, five wooden blanks, all different kinds of wood. Um, don't ask me what they are because. Uh, I was sent these, and I'll tell you from where later. Uh, anybody who doesn't know what a pen kit is, this the, the one that, that I've got here, this one down here, is a slimline pen kit. So you get comes in the kit, there's two little brass tubes which go through the middle, and if I just lift this, you can see the little brass tube in the insert. Kind of glistening in the corner. There is a nib, a spacing ring for the centre, a button for the top, uh, or an end piece of you like, an end cap, whatever you want to call that, a pocket clip, the mechanism for turning, transmission, and a, they're called. A what this here? This is called the transmission. transmission. Yep. Well, it sounds like a car now. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's the bit that advances and retracts the nib, is what it is. You call it what you like. And then we have the uh, ink refill. So, it's up to you guys what we're going to turn today. So, we're going to try and do two. I'm going to try and do one of the resin type, and then I'm going to do one of the wooden type today, live on YouTube. You guys have to pick. So, while you are thinking about that just for a minute, um, somebody can read how, who's in the chat to me, and I'll set up my, my mandrel, etc. Joe does that. Name, if you like Joe. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mark. I was just about to talk <laughs> anyway. You bossy boots. Good afternoon, everybody. You can see what kind of day now. it's going to be, can't you? I'm going to gag him before long. Right. We've got uh, Lawrence Bagaja, Wood Wizardry by Colin, Charlie Taylor, uh, P. Hobby Turner. TJ Turning, Robert Dolman, Wood Turning by Barry, Terry Bartlett, Darren Callison, Doug Miller at Woods One Round, um, Rob RC, uh, whoop, Rob CP, Wood Turner. <laughs> I'll Rob be Rob CP, yeah. Hi, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tongue twister there for me. Circular Wood by Keith. Um, Hi, Keith. <clears throat> we've got David J. Heath. Where it starts. Andy Woodwork Learner. 
Katie the Cornish maid. I think the resounding victory is top left, bottom right. Yeah, yeah. that's what I kind of thought. So I top left, Katie. Yet. All right, sorry. Jeez, hurry up. Then, no, no, it's not. It's not. It's not you. It's Bossy Boots here. Nick Castle, CJ Hobbies. Um, <laughs> go in. It's not yeah, my fault. You've got it. so many people. Malcolm Douglas. Can't believe so many, buddy. Oh, no. Ah, that's right, you. From, you know. That's you from Chris wouldn't Dodds. it be nice, Anne? I see you. Chris Hi, Chris. Another Aussie. Now, and now wouldn't you've got it be nice? No, I know. Hugh nice. from Wouldn't It Be Nice is I know, I know. Thanks, Hugh. Good for afternoon, sure everybody. <laughs> if I've forgotten, and if I've missed anybody, I do apologise. Um, All right. Well, so, welcome. We reckon the choices then that have been made so far are this uh, this one here. Is this correct? Yep. yep. And this one That's, down here. That looks lovely. Yep. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that one down I'm, on the bottom right. Uh, this one here be... is that's Rosewood. Well, we think oh, it's first. I would, I would be tempted to do that one first to get this your one. eye in. Yes, this one. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, <laughs> is everybody quite happy how you make a blank? The, nobody needs to know how you actually make uh, one of these bits. It's not that we've difficult. Got, we've well, got Alexander it comes up in the chat. Yeah, Robert if it comes said. up in the chat, you can let me know, and I'll we'll talk yeah. through it. Robo's in. Oh. Hi, Robo. He's turning Hi, Robo. a pen, mate. I'm turning, I've turned a said... pen, Robo. Sorry, mate. <laughs> so we've I got uh, I've got a pen mand mandrel, which basically is a collet chuck with a steel rod with a threaded bit in the end. MT2 taper for my drop for my lathe. And there's a little brass locking ring on the end. And there are three bushings. One, two, three. Are you surprised there, Mark? Yeah. So leave Actually, one bushing on what called. to give you a little bit of room from that end. And our pre prepared blank has got its little metal, a little brass tube uh, in it already. So we'll pop that on. Another bushing. And then the other half of the. Uh, I've drawn a line in the middle of these so I know where the, where the grain direction is. So we'll just kind of line them up and then we'll close that up. We'll use the square show. Felicity WT is in the chat. Good afternoon, that's, Felicity. That's, now, that's you've flicked. glued those uh, tubes oh, into the woods, haven't you, uh, Brian? The, the, what, the tubes I prepared yesterday. Uh, there's two. You can use super glue if you want, but some people say it doesn't hold. It breaks out eventually. But I use five-minute epoxy. Uh, let me see, where is the five minute epoxy? This was the five minute epoxy I used. It was Gorilla Glue. A little five minute set of epoxy. So you just mix up a tiny little bit of time and just do a couple at a time uh, because it takes, it's a bit footery. Good Scottish word there, footery. Um, so it takes a little bit of time to get them actually slid in and then I left them overnight to set hard. Well, if I was so still able to turn pens, then I would be using the half-hour epoxy because I'm getting slow in my old age. All right, yeah. okay. Yeah, if you use a slower one, because you, you're not going to use them in straight away anyway, so use a slower one, it's easier. Get more done at a time. Well, I didn't, I, have, uh, the, um, I didn't have standard epoxy. I just had five-minute stuff, so I used it. Because I'm I still... Used, I, I might be old, but I'm still quite quick. I used the Gorilla Glue. The uh, box, not the epoxy. The um, foaming one. Foaming one, yeah. Yeah, I've heard that's quite good. I've never that's used it. Uh, that, that's kind of space filling glue, isn't it? Yes. It'll, it'll take up the little gaps if, if there's any it little gaps. Yeah. Because we've... Uh, um, it's we not actually these the out. foaming part that holds. No. It's... Uh, ben Jammin's in. So, ben. I can use my spindle roughing gouge on this just to take knock the edges off and then I'll go to my skew. So the lathe is going to be at full speed, guys. Top belt. Uh, on the top belt. I just lock that off. Something sounds. Oh. Something sounds a bit loose there. I don't like the sound of that. No, there is nothing loose though. Just something's a bit rattly there. 
Switch that on. That's at the slowest speed on the top belt. So the lathe is running at 1190 now. Crank it on up. And it's really running at 3,970. Safety goggles on. Robert was just putting it on record that he's not watching, you heathens. Just listening to the entertainment in the background. Yes, I bet he's taking notes furiously. Who's taking notes? Bravo. Why? To see what parts he needs to buy so he can start making pens. The thing is, are there any instructions of how to put pens together? Millions. I I'm just about to give you some. All over the internet as well. Yeah, yeah there's, there's millions of uh, sites over the internet. So that just got a bit loose there. So we'll tighten that up a wee bit. Um, CJ Hobby so, says, don't over, don't over tighten the tail stock or it can cause deflection in the mandrel rod. Quite yeah. right. You can bend it. So it's just actually, just in there and just touching. Yeah, just support. So it's just touching, it's just to stop it wobbling back and forward is all, it, it's, all it's for. And it's on a cone centre. It's not it's just not quite tight enough. We've got funny noise happening. Mm. It should be better. There we go. Sid's repurposing has joined us. Good afternoon, Sid. Hi Sid. So that's like kind of round. I'm going to switch to my skew now. And now basically what you're trying to do is bring you, get your shape down to the, the shape you actually want your pen to be. So there are a, a million ways you could do this. I like slim pens. I don't like fat ends. I don't like a bulbous bit in the middle. Michael Howes then. Hi, Michael. So I kind of like to just make them quite slim. Got a challenge for anybody down uh, in Robbo's part of Australia. Can you build a large catapult and fly some pigs past his window? Then he'll turn a pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always a possibility. So the bushings there are there, guys, to give you a guide as to where you need to go when you're uh, as I'm cutting this I'm going to try and aim to leave oh, a sixteenth of an inch above the bushing to leave myself something to sand yep. Do you remember that noise you had uh, one time in your live, ma uh, Mark, when you had that uh, bit of it. Bit the of it. US, USB yep. disconnect noise? Going for over an hour and nobody else I, could hear it. Yeah, I've got it today. <laughs> because it's the camera you've got on the tripod. I think it's something to do with that camera's on the tripod. So we've, well, as soon as I get this down to the right size I want, it's getting moved. Now, I had to disappear for a moment because I've got a phone call, but Colin Chalmers is in and Dave uh, from Mo Valley Makers is in. Hey, Welcome guys. Nice. Thank you for coming along. Thank you. Welcome along. There will be no discussion about finishes, Ben. No. So that's, that's a, this end I'm going to use for holding with my finger, if you like. So this end can be a little bit thicker. That's purely a design thing uh, for yourself. Make it whatever you like, guys. Of 
Question from Trevor P. Getting used to yes. my Pro Edge, what condition are your 120 grit ceramic belts in before you change them? Depends how tight you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite true. There we go. <laughs> well, there you go. Now, don't forget, you can always clean them a little bit as well. With the... Uh, would... What do you use yeah. to clean them? Um, it's like a block of rubber for cleaning belt yeah, sanders. Yeah, it's, like it's like a block of rubber for cleaning belt sanders. And this is what it looks like. All oh, right. So it's just kind of it's a hard rubbery substance, and it just cleans out the grit. It's designed for the job, guys. I'll just move this camera out of my way because it's been a pain in the bum. Uh, we've got um, Shirley oh, Ellen yeah. Twig in the chat. <laughs> Hi, Shirley. How are you doing, girl? Otherwise known as the Brian J. Usby Fan Club. It's, uh, otherwise known as the Cuddly Wuddly Fan Club. And we've also got Roger Mills in the chat. Hi, Roger. Thank you for coming in. Good afternoon. So Shirley's from Australia as well. Brian, you know that she thing we talked about the other day that I said you'd do? What, rushing? And you, and you said you'd stop? Well, trying to. There's no evidence of you stopping yet. All right. Well, <laughs> very subtle, Mark. So I'll have to do trying, this here and stop for a second. Subtle. And then... Uh, why, why, why break the habit of a lifetime? And alive. Well, I'm not rushing, Marlon. I'm taking my time. But, but you, you were. You were falling away at that thing like it was a lump of metal with a rasp pile. Well, sure, it's fine. Wasn't it working? Elegance. Ooh, lovely. Composure. I'm totally composed. I nearly said exposed there, but I yeah. meant composed. <laughs> so it was before he came live. Um, Gaff Sadeh Woodwork has uh, joined a us. A little bit of a bump just oh, there. There you go, when Mark. You said You're happy wood, I was expecting it to be more red. Ruby. Oh, yeah. I knew she was going to say that. We think it was worth it. We think. I can find the bag. Oh, I just love to be tidy, guys. Right, so that's the kind of shape of the pen I want. That's fine. That's... Uh, Machine Nodel has joined us. Good afternoon. And now I'm going to give that a quick rub with two. I'm going to start at 240 grit, guys, because I use my skew there. It's pretty, pretty much of a. Actually, my, my apology there, Brian. It's not Rosewood. It's either. It's what? It's either Chicate or Mapani. <sighs> either of which I've never turned before, so this could be interesting. So we'll just give that a little. Because that, that blank came out of a mixed exotic species pack. Ah. And I know, <coughs> I know, I've turned the other four blanks. So it's okay. either Riccate or Mapani. So now Don't as I'm sanding... Thing. Go on, Brian. So now as I'm sanding this, I'm trying to just bring the end down just to match the the uh, bushing. Guess what I had to do there, Mark? What was that, but I had to look up at my sign to make sure I said the word bushing correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so if you think I'm joking, guys. He does actually have a piece of paper with the word bushings written on it. Because I have a, I have a terrible habit of forgetting what these things are called. Bushing, he has bushings. a mental block on bushings. I do. And I'll I prove that to you just now. Bushes. No, bushings. Well, I'll prove that to you right now. Okay, Chris Pavel has joined us. 
Good afternoon, Chris. Hi, Chris. Right there, look, see? <laughs> I, stuck it. I stuck it right there, see that? To his bushings. <laughs> <laughs> Just because okay. I can never remember. Right, that's the. Uh, just a little tiny bit more off this one. That's the Darren frailty of age, you guys. Can friends with the 60 grit rather than using the tools. I suppose you could. If you want to be a bit ignorant about the thing. So CJ now. CJ Obbies has just made a good point, something I was about to say to you. Anyway, turn the lathe off. And sand lengthways along the with the grain to get rid of any spirals, any lateral um, or radial marks. Radial marks, yep. The Yorkshire gets Stephen Meadows joined us. Oh, the Yorkshire gets in. Look at that. Two tens. I said his name once and I put out two tens and he appeared. Yeah, uh, Clint. he's related to Beetlejuice. I'm sure he is. <laughs> Could be Beetlejuice's long lost cousin, I suppose. Give that a quick rub with a piece of paper just to get the dust off it. And we'll use Yorkshire grit um, original first because that takes me from 240. Don't need a huge oh, that's way too much. Don't need a huge amount because it's only a small piece of wood. Now, when you're using this, you want to try and avoid touching the touching bushings. The bushings, because if you don't, you'll get black marks on your wood. So, turn the speed down a little bit. It's for those that'll go on this belt, <laughs> which is not that slow. But anyway, and I'll just, I'm just trying to stay off the bushing if I can. Robo's amazed that you can spell as well as read. Ooh. The cheek of it. I expect you to inspect some brief from Robbo. And, and the woodwork learner has suggested sanding sealer? Yes. Should have done, yeah. Yeah. Should have done. Although, although but Terry I'm using two lots of sanding sealer on pens. You don't need to use it on pens. I'm using Yorkshire Get twice, so that'll, that'll do. Should use sanding sealer, yeah. I always use it on pens. Yeah, no. I don't because I can't turn pens. Uh, you, no, you can't because this is the this is the offending uh, call it. I find but, some gullible uh, fool to take my mandrel off me, so um, I haven't got to do it anymore. That some uh, gullible idiot, me, <laughs> took. Thought I can't turn the pen because I've got I no was, I've got no mandrel. The next thing. There. I was there when he offered to send you that mandrel, yeah. and I was chewing on my fist because I knew what he was doing. <laughs> I said, and I said, oh, that'll be very kind, Pete. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then it arrived in the post the next day. I kind of should have gathered that. It was... i got to say, it was pretty wrapped for about a year, waiting for somebody to be daft enough to take it. <laughs> <laughs> So a clean piece of cloth just to tidy that up again and get uh, any residue of the original grit off. And I'll use a, another clean piece of cloth. We'll use some of the original grit original. Although I'm a little bit late, it's hands that feel pity. Oh, and I thought we got away with that. With light brown, Yorkshire green. You, you, you nearly got away with it. What have I done now? I think my what? ears just hurt. All right. It's my singing. So this should, <coughs> in theory, not in theory, but in practice, this will take the this will take the sanding up to about two thousand grit. Wow. Which for a wooden pen is more than enough. I would say. If you want to go I'll high, like get some toothpaste. Nice and minty nice. as well. Yeah, then your nice. Will... Oh, nice and minty fresh. <laughs> yeah, you can chew on the end of it, clean your teeth at the same time. 
So the well, actual turning of a pen bad. is not that big a deal. The, the trick is not to get too thin. Would wizardry by Colin as a question? He says there are so many different types of glue out there. What is the best for gluing in the tubes? As I've used cheap super glue, but I've had a couple come loose. Brian, bring us back on screen a sec, will you please? Who you back on screen? Earlier on. All, all, all of us here. Yeah. Yeah, hold on a second, guys. Just turn the lathe off. Mark has an announcement to make, obviously. <laughs> there you that go. Gorilla really glue. Good. There you are. Colin, I've tried. Just about every glue going, and I've never had this stuff fail on any pens I've ever made. Some of the others have failed, maybe from my own mistakes or whatever, <laughs> but this stuff has never failed. Hey, yeah. Gorilla glue, it's the brown one, it's one that foams, activates with moisture. So dip your blanks in a bit of water, shove your tube in. Bang. Brilliant. There you go. So to finish this off, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, microcrystalline wax from our good friends at Hampshire Sheen. You could use whatever you like. But that's what I'm going to use today, just for speed. CJ's hobby, like hobby says he prefers not using a mandrel and turns between centres. This is the Absolute best way to turn pens. Do agree, yeah. Well, between centers. Between centers, yeah, yeah. It's faster, yeah. it's more accurate. It's easier. Well, I'm quite happy doing it like this. I'll just continue to use the mandel. It's quite easy. I thought it was easier. <clears throat> okay, I've got an excuse. I don't have a drive center for doing that, so I can't do uh, that. And, and you've, oh! like, just, you've got no work on there. <laughs> oh Pete, I've got a I've got a spare sixty degree drive I could send you. No, that's all right, you can keep that. You might need it. I'll bring it up with me when I be, when we come up. Send, send the robo. He needs it. My phone just rang. Actually, that's a good point. Um Woodbot Learner says brass tube must be clean and slightly rough too. Um yeah, just scratch it up a bit. I usually scratch the tubes up with 120. Yeah, that's what I did. I scratched them with a 120 grip. So that's that one done, guys. So we'll not go on to the assembly. We'll just take this off. Set it to one side. Making sure we keep them lined up in the same direction. We'll set that over there. And we'll come back to that when we go to assemble it. Now, you wanted me to do this one, didn't you? This... Well, it doesn't fit. It's fit. No, it doesn't. Well, I'm there. Where's that going on? There's a bit of glue down there. there. Get a six mil drill bit and just run it through. No, it's fine. Right. Well, definitely some stuff not going on there. Six mil drill bit. Seven mil drill bit. Six mil drill bit. Six. Yes, Colin, it is the waterproof one. But if you have a, if you prepare your blanks like Brian did, drill the hole through. Doesn't matter whether it's uh, wood or acrylic. Just before you glue the um, tube into the blank, just have a mug of water sat next to you, yeah. literally in and out. Dump the blank in the water, straight in, straight out. Give it a shake. <laughs> Throw the tube in with the glue on it, obviously, and the moisture that's inside will activate the glue quicker. It doesn't foam as much, and the tube won't move around as much. Because when that way. glue foams, it can move the um, tubes in and out of the planks. By the way, round. The acrylic was at the ends. Like that? You sure it yeah. was? Yeah. Thought it was. Tell him, it's what he sent me. That's it. 
I'll agree. I'll agree this time. Oh, you were right the first time. Can't be stupid to say I am. Sorry. Rob CP you saying he's never seen one. He's in. Hi, Heather. Okay. Yeah, Hi, Rob CP saying he's never seen one turn between centers. One of the best videos, I think, is the Procraft one. If you go to the Pro Procraft website, he turns a pen between centers there. Also, have a look at um, RJB Woodturner. He turns between centers a lot. And Zach Higgins does too. All right, so this I'm going to use a ball gauge or a little spindle gauge on this, or maybe a, maybe not such a little spindle gauge. Could I use my small ball gauge, Mike? Uh, Ryan, Steve's Steve's corrected me, and he's right, resin in the middle. Hello, Steve from SK Crafts. Hello, Steve. Thanks, mate. That's the way I had it. Hello, Steve. That's the way you had it. Yeah, I don't want to maybe say that. That's the way they, to do it. Because they're saying all the best uh, punch and judy shows. Wouldn't it be nice, said I'm at the two outside ends of the tubes with the Sharpie for orientation. You don't see the marks as the nib and the clip hides them. Resin in the middle, is that it? That's it. And Jennifer Crafton Creations is, is in. Good afternoon, Jennifer. That's it. Right, now, just before you put that uh, screw on there, Yes. Which bit do you want in your hand? The larger bit of resin or the smaller bit of resin? I want this bit in my hand. Because I would go the other way around myself. So this bit? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, oh, ah, no! I dropped the bishop. It'd be down in the shaving somewhere. It's not. It's in my hand now. I caught it. <laughs> that bit. I don't really mind, but no, that way. Right, we're happy now. Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. You want to stop whining at me now, the three or no. two years at least. No, no. Brian, just no. put it the way that you want it. Two years give me such a hard time out there, that's it now. That's the way it should be. That looks better now. Doesn't that? Douglas Mullingham has joined us. Good afternoon, Douglas. So, you reckon Hi, I can do with this little, little ball gauge, can you? Yeah. I was advised not to use my skew on this because because of the resin. And I've no. only ever turned resin once before in my life, guys. So No. Why did we advise you not to use the skew? Because of um, cause, the cause it's cause it's the green orientation. Green orientation. That's what he said, yes. I think green orientation. Because it's cross grain as opposed to uh, spindle what do you call it? Cross grain, not in spindle green. orientation. You've got 52 people watching, Brian, and it's 1.33. 50 people watching me, Tongue Panther. He's all mad. <laughs> oh, dear. Love it. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate every last one of you coming in and watching me play with pens. It's funny. <laughs> Turn the speed up. 3,800. Oh, no, it's 3,980 <clears throat> revolutions. Well, but Learner said uh, carbide tools work great on resin. So, so the conventional tools. Just like that, yeah. like. I don't have any carbide tools and I will not turn resin, so I just can't really answer the question at all. No, I, I don't really turn resin. Mark Stroughton's in. Hi, Mark. Afternoon, Mark. And the Yorkshire gets his now tell some Brian. What was that about the Yorkshire? What did the Yorkshire get say? Now tell some Brian. <laughs> <laughs> TJ Turning's having to go. Terry's having to go now. All right, Terry, Terry's away to Butlins. Oh, he, he, Terry's away shooting in Butlins this afternoon. Now that's not, Terry. that's not going to be a mass shooting or anything. He's, he's going to the range. Yeah, so. It's not like a bowling for Columbine or anything, it's just no. Terry's on holiday again. Is that his fifth one this year? I've given up counting. 
It is his fifth holiday this year, yeah. Wow. Sorry for showing me. How did I get that off of there? You don't really do. Now, CJ Hobbies uh, is saying, use a much lighter touch on those than you did on the old wood or it will explode. Who said that? What you need, what you need is a toothbrush. And not Michelle's. That's just a nuisance, that. That's just, ah, I hate that stuff. Let me just put that on. <laughs> well, look at him, I'm covered in the bloody stuff. It's everywhere now. He's, ah! Who needs resin? So, a much lighter touch. Yes. No, I must be, I'll be okay on the wood. So, I have to ask this question myself because I don't understand why I'm having to use this. Because basically, I'm just using this bow, guys. I'm using the wing of it like a skew. But it's a supported cut. It's got more supported bevel, is that what you're telling me? Yes. There's more bevel support. Okay, I concur then. Now, what we didn't tell you in the beginning was that we're going to tell you now because these are turning quite well for me. Ooh, is that I've got uh, and the reason that Steve SK came in to tell me to do it the right way around is because Steve SK supplied these blanks. We all have some to try. And I have to say, the resin is turning really nicely there. Um, woodwork learners are careful on using extractions as the streams can block the impellers. Yeah, but my, uh, my, uh, my well, extraction is going through a cyclone, so it should just kind of disappear down the cyclone with a bit of luck. And the impellers on my extraction system are protected by a cloth filter, a paper bag, and then a like a, an oil filter type thing as well. So there's not much chance of that get to the impeller, but I understand what you mean. This is, Chris uh, Dodds has got a question. Does Terry go to Middle Earth for his holidays? Middle Earth. No, he yeah, travels to Mordor. Is, no, 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 he travels to Mordor. He lives in Middle he Earth. He lives in Middle Earth. He yeah. goes to Mordor for his holidays. His workshop is Middle Earth, apparently. I haven't banged my head in there yet, but Mark has. Yes. So is Steve. And, and Steve had to wear a hard hat. There is photographic evidence as well. Do you like a thin pen or a chubby pen to hold? I like, a, I like a thin pen. Mm, I do. Basically because I've only got thin fingers myself. I haven't got big, fat, chunky hands. There's an issue there because I can't really see where I'm going. Clear it away. Yeah, well, no matter. That's why it's always handy to have a toothbrush just down on the bedways when you turn in this stuff. Then you don't have to turn the lathe off, clear it after every path, pass. It's a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. So, so Robert is, is saying that, to Steve, so Steve, I... you are to blame for leading him down the path of de decadence. Yep, he is indeed. He is the frame mover. Not only am I turning a pen, I'm turning bloody resin. Yes, Robo, I did. That's why I said 
the wood sections aren't in spindle orientation. They're in ball plank orientation. So they're cross grain, not hand grain. They're not spindles. Do that. Come over there, you old shit, mate. Take a little bit more over there. Richard, Richard Phelan's Phelan just joined. Hi, Richard. How you doing, buddy? Afternoon, Richard. Hi, Richard. <clears throat> well, that's hard to get that just, just right there. Steve has said, now I know you like uh, turning resin, Brian. I will send you a 12-inch <laughs> resin ball blank. Yeah, good lad, Steve. Thanks for that. <laughs> Don't expect me to turn it anytime soon. And Mole Valley Maker is off to make trees out of wood. I'm guessing he's prepping for Christmas. i got to start doing that soon. See you later, Mole. So have I. Christmas trees and snowmen. I should really have started in March or something, See, but yeah. Is, uh, is, 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 will, it, will it be impossible for me to use a skew on that? Because I would rather use a skew on that. Go for it. Just to Go try and get a, a finish. Just to try and get a nice finish cut. See what, see what it comes out like. <sighs> it's small. You can you get away with anything. Probably. So speed all the way up. I just want to try and get a better finish on it. So basically the rules are there to be broken a bit, aren't they, or bent then? Yep. The rules are the guidelines and don't apply in every circumstance. Yeah, a Just little bit more of off that end. Now Ben Jamming has said, given that I have failed to sell any of my turnings, I've decided to install some shelves in my spare room. To store all of them. I'll tell you what, the resin turns much easier. And that's as much as I'm doing now. We're ignoring anybody that asks that sort of question, Douglas. Got some squeaky noises happening now. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd went too thin on the end there, but I haven't still got a nice little lip on this end. That'll be fine. I just need to get a little thinner. Get off me, you friggin'. <laughs> oh, I hate that stuff. Jeez. Need to get a little thinner in the resin bits. Like just a little bit. That should be better there. And do the same thing on this end. That should be enough. Sanding. Pop that out of the way. Chuck that down now. Looks lovely. About 120 again. Turn the speed down a little bit.
I really need to turn the speed down there, sure then. I can just it's fight. It feels like it's too slow. Turn the speed back up again. Woodwork learners asking, looking for an alternative finish than CA on wooden pens. Su suggestions. Wipe on poly, melamine, uh, friction polish, or yeah. Hampshire Sheen high gloss and just let the pen build a patina over time. I use, um, no, I don't, so because I don't make pens. If I was to make making a pen, <laughs> I, I would use um, the wax stick like Terry uses quite frequently, which I use on oh, most okay. of my small spindles. Canuba wax. Canuba wax in a hard stick. You've got to be able to, get to turn it fast to melt it. It does one melt of, if you're holding it all day. One of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And they come in different colours as well. So they do. That's a that's a fairly neutral one. You get darker ones for darker woods. But, um, Barry's wood creations is in. Good afternoon, Barry. So it's it's hard. It's actually uh, taking a bit longer to sand that um, resin down than it does the timber. So I had to be careful that I don't overdo the timber. And it gets hot very quick. Uh, Richard Phelan says... Ah, oh, I've just broke the resin. Shh. The hot pen polish sticks. I just got it too hot. Too hot. I got it too hot and broke it. Look at that. Oh, dear. Ah. Damn. That was my fault, guys, because I got that far too hot. I should have took my time with that a bit more. Has it revealed the tube? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that. Has it, has it come out as a piece? It uh, did, I think. Yep, it didn't need. Glue it back on. There'll be a crack in it, Pete. There will. But, you know, this is alive. You just want to finish it. Bit of CA. Bit of CA. Glue it back on. <laughs> Uh, medium CA would be best for that, wouldn't it? Nah, thin CA will be fine. Um, yeah, Douglas has um, been asking about CA finish. And he said, is that not what is used? Or is Brian using a friction polish? Just trying to find out. Um, it's kind of an in-joke that we don't use CA as a finish because it's not a finish, it's a glue. But it is a common finish on pens. And... It does work, but it feels like plastic. So, American pen turners love using CA glue. Um, but it's it's yeah, like Pete I says, do, makes it feel like plastic. I do use CA as a finish on Christmas tree baubles because it is shiny, and you don't touch them, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you're going to touch something that's made of wood, then it wants to feel like wood, in my opinion. Mine too. I'm pretty well annoyed about that now. I've lost my smiley face for a month. It'll be back. You'll be back. It'll be back. Uh, wouldn't it be nice? God. I've seen you with my hard microcrystalline. That's called Pentona's Overcoat, and it works really well. Yeah, that's a bloke morale there, guys. I'll have to keep this pan for myself now, as a reminder. To yep. Don't get too hot with resin. Don't get too hot with resin, particularly when it starts to get thin. Stupid. And, as I've said in the past, slim lines Shh. are one of the hardest pens to turn well, because you have to get the ends so thin down to the down to the brass tube. Can I do? And uh, Mark, you've got a comment there. Well, not really a comment. It was a. Uh, what did Mark say about rushing? He did. Yeah. I. <laughs> Doug Miller. Who well is that? Uh, would be Doug Miller, of course. Yeah. I don't know. There was somebody else said that. Doug Miller's just saying, not all of us, Mark. I don't like it. Good. 
good man. Uh, um, wouldn't it be nice, I said, at, at Brian, uh, yes. not to glue the bushings to the mandrel? Yeah, well, I hope I didn't. <laughs> oh, I didn't use that much suit um, and MCA glue, much. so mm. I hope um, I didn't anyway. Douglas, Robert check Dorn out, wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. He was on the he was a master pen maker he is from indeed. the UK. Yes, he does sometimes use CA, but nobody's perfect. But sometimes he also doesn't use CA. And uh, he's a fantastic pen turner. His segmented work on pens is just stunning. Blows you away. Darren said, if this pen is now stuck to the mantle, <laughs> is that the end of pen turning? That's the end of pen turning. You're absolutely right. <laughs> pen turning will cease to exist in my workshop. No, it won't. Uh, notice I didn't use uh, Sandy Sealer again. Just as a just as a tiny look, well, it might be all right actually. I might actually get away with this. Just put that back in again. You buddy, it's true, mate. I don't blow smoke up people's behinds. No. You're the no, you're the, the you're the UK RJB woodturner, and you know. I've it. watched I've I've watched a, a quite a number of uh, used pen tonics. Uh, fabulous. Richard makes some nice pens as well. Richard's feeling. He makes some lovely pens. <coughs> I have to say. Yeah, he's actually said that he's got uh, an order for four dozen slimline kits. <laughs> who, who, Richard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, I'm not surprised by that. Soul destroying, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, but I have to say that all of the. the there are so many steps when you're when you're making a pen. It's just like, you know, I don't know, fifteen or twenty different steps. You have to just batch them. Hands that. that feel pity can be soft. Oh, there she goes again. With light brown, looks you gritty. Well done, Joe. Thank, Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Oh no, you're welcome. Do not think, Anytime. Do not, well, think do not think I've suffered in my life enough. No. So that's original no. Yorkshire gratitude no. there, guys. <laughs> And I'm just giving it two or three minutes to work. It's still time to suffer some more, Mark. No, this will be the last Yorkshire regret today. Or the last of the original, anyway. There's no song for the... So I can feel that now under my fingers there. It's just kind of... It feels like it's not being abrasive anymore. It's just kind of almost like it's polishing it. So we'll change There's a the lot of talk piece about of uh, different pen kits and um, how it can be a bit soul destroying to make lots, but it's also quite satisfying because they're quick to make. If you batch it up and do cut all your blanks at the same time, yeah. tube them all at the same time, you can knock out quite a lot of pens in quite a short time. So we'll use some Yosha Grip Microfine now just to try and bring this up a bit more. I've done orders like that. You do a day to cut. A day to glue. The next day, you turn all the fronts. The next day, turn all the backs. And the final day is assemble everything. Yeah. Uh, always remember to put your product saver back on your on your uh, grit. That's the lid. This pen's going to look you, terrific. In case you drop yeah. it on the floor. Now, I have to say, the resin uh, that, that Steve has made here, guys, uh, it's like the ocean. It's an absolutely beautiful bit of resin. Katie Super said job, that Steve. at the beginning. Super job, Steve. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for um, pen blanks, give Steve at SK Crafts a shout. He's selling them at a reasonable price, I have to say. And don't go by my experience that they're going to fall apart because that was my fault completely there, guys. Completely my fault. I've got another four there to practice on to get see can I get it right next time. 
If you get it wrong, you'll get it right next time. Next time. Oh, Trevor P. Hobbiturn has been really nice about my singing. Yo, I need a warning next time. My sound was on. Well, that's, that's, uh, I'm that's with you there, Trevor. It did just sort of come out of nowhere, really, wasn't it? There was no warning. Just a start. Another warning. Brian was doing here. Yorkshire Grit on the pen. How much yeah, warning? Yeah, so Yorkshire Grit. Yep, exactly. That's How much true. more advanced warning do you need? If you'd been paying attention, <laughs> you'd have known it was coming. Yeah, as soon as you see that black turn open, put the mute button on. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Harsh. <laughs> Harsh, Pete. Harsh. But fair. So there's the black that comes off the bushing, guys, if you want to. So that's why it's advisable to avoid them when you're actually... Yeah, steel and uh, any abrasive will cause black marks which will transfer to your timber. There we go. It's actually quite difficult to see that crack now. As long as I can get that bushing off again, we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, be all right. Mm. Um, Fingers so, are crossed. Grab hold of it, turn the laser on, you'll be fine. What we're going to use as a finish for that now? Will I try some uh, friction polish or... That could be friction, sure. friction polish? Friction, yeah. We'll give this a little go with some friction polish then. I'll just put some on the cloth. Uh, turn it up full speed, is that right? Yep. Light. A little bit of friction polish. Go for it. Now, is this better so that it can be handled? And you don't get fingerprints on? Is that what friction polish No, is because um, it, it if you just use it, hardens. it hardens, yeah. Ah, right, so, yeah. <clears throat> friction polish is effectively French polish. It's just um, modified for using with a power tool. Got you. And wouldn't it be nice, as uh, said, if you were sanding the sealer before sanding, it would normally stop any black marks on the pen blanks. All right, yeah. thanks for that, Hugh. I'll remember that in future. Or I'll try to. I bought myself ten pen kits just to just to have a little bit of a practice and see how I got on. And Mark sent me one pen kit, which was that. Uh, what do you say that wood was now, Mark? I've forgotten. Uh, Pang, uh, panga, was it? No. No, Jakarta or Mopani. Yeah. One or the other. Never heard of them fair. There we go. Let's try that. So now we can get down to assembly, guys. Well, let's see, can we get this bush off first then? Eh? Get rid of some of that rubbish off my lathe first. I would Please say, looking at, looking at the website, I'd say it was uh, Jakarta. Remove the cone center. Which is... Bring these bits in. Get rid of that. That's better, right? Adam says, Brian, looking forward to watching this back. Good man, Adam. Yeah. It's one off. I came off of that end, but it's not coming off this end. That's all right. Just tap, tap up. Just tap it gently on the bedways. Out sideways. Yeah, right. There it goes. I got it. Now, will this come off? It did. Cool. So we'll set oh, them so to one side for a second. Been... Put the bushes back on there so they don't lose them. I love what turning by Adam's in. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Douglas Mungham saying, every time I get used to friction polish, the towel gets stuck to the work. What am I doing wrong? So, um, speed. I haven't got a press, a pen press. I didn't spend 50 or 60 quid on a pen press. I've got a perfectly good press. 
on this tail stump. This makes a perfectly good pen press. And I've got a little um, piece of wood mounted in this chuck that was just a waste block that I had left over from another project. Drilled a small hole in the centre. Let me just uh, close up and zoom in there. There's a small hole drilled in the centre, which is, is designed to take this. So, now. Chris Dodds has suggested, just for fun, Brian, leave out the middle spacer on your next pen. That way you can get the yeah. pen one thickness. Okay. Mm. So I made this little bit of a, a Morse taper, and that's the piece I'm going to push with. So stick that in the tailstock. Let's grab a pen kit. Douglas, with friction polish, put it on very quickly with the lathe stopped. Then with the same wet piece of cloth, with the lathe running at high speed, just uh, work it in. It's friction polish. You need to generate friction. So we've got all these little bits. And we'll try not to drop them and drop them on the floor. CJ Hobbies is saying, gently sand the ends that add CA before pressing as you have a fingernail. Gently sand the ends that had CA on, on this, you mean? On here? The bit, the bit you repair. Just rub this. Okay. If, you use, if you use CA finish, you end up with a like a bit of a fingernail of glue over the end of the blank. So you just All right. take so your I'm fingernail just, off. Yeah. I'm just taking that. This is a piece of 600 grit, just. Yep. I just give, give it a little rub over the ends, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Just like that? Yeah, I can actually feel that. Well, it might be easier just to put that on the bed way and just rub that. There we go. Let's go. Darren's pointing out this is a very expensive pen press, although it does have other purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would suggest it's a very cheap pen press. So, first things first, let's do the... Uh, so these two are the middle bits. Which end do I want to use for my finger? It was this end, I think. No, it wasn't. It was that end because that end's a little bit thinner. So we're going to put a nib in that first. So we'll just get it started. Put that in there. Bring up said <coughs> tail stop without wrecking the whole house. Should have a board in there, shouldn't I? I must make a little board for that. There. And then just screw that up. Well, what they're suggesting if you drop any bits on the floor, you might find your dongle. Yeah, thanks for that. It's also Too soon. Too soon. Cheers, Cheers buddy. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. So that's that bit. And the next bit I need to put in there is this bit. And that fits in this end. Now, I can never get in. Uh, I've watched so many videos. There is a, on the silver piece, there is a little um, compression ring just there where my thumb is now. Is that where I push this into? Just or stop short of that. Yeah. Right, just stop short. It. Stop short and it's trial and error testing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to try and shove, push that in. So the brass bit is going in. Make sure you get it kind of lined up straight. There's actually two lines on this brass bit, so I'll go past the first one. Stop at the second. Well, it's been done, not pushing. Stop at the second line. Should not just make the whole brass bit disappear, no? I wouldn't. The whole brass bit should disappear, should it not? It's like Hugh said, don't push up yeah. to the line. Just go shy of it and sneak no, there's, up. There's still it. a line here. So yeah. you can take, that out, take that out now. And then we put the put our insert in and screw it on up. And it should. So it hasn't come out far enough. It's just come out a uh, sixteenth of an inch. So we need to go in another. So we can go in right up to that little line. No, it needs to go a good bit, Peter, I have to say. So I'm just going to push it on in. Okay, 
can get it going. It's not going in. Ah, there it goes. Right, let's try that now. So I went about halfway, and I'm just going. I suppose once you've made a few of them, you'll get the you'll get the feel of it. Sort of. It's yeah, always sort a good. Of. It's, it's always a good feel. habit to get into. To try it and just sneak up yeah. on them. Yeah, if you can see that coming out there. So that's it fully out, and it's out, steps out about a quarter of an inch there. Quarter uh, inch? Well, just, well, maybe not. Oh, you want me to measure it? Yeah. All right, okay. eighth of an inch. All right, from the ball to the tip is 2.5 mil. Okay. So, that is. so that should be mil, enough. Six mil is a quarter of an inch, so it's quite a bit shy of that. Yeah, it is quite a bit shy. <laughs> I don't want to take that waxy bit off the end of the ball because that's what's keeping anchor. So that's that bit done. Next bit then is to assemble the, uh, the top. So this bit, the uh, clip has to go in there. And then the little end cap squeezes in. A little bit. So it just went in with a little click there. Squeeze that up, mate. CJ Hobbs has said he's used some nylon to make uh, the pushing bits for his lathes. I've used nylon for quite a few things yep, as well. Yeah, yep. nylon would be fine. Yep, I just had a bit of that's just a bit of beach that was left over, uh, so I used that. It's hard enough to do the job. Yep. So then well, we've got, got the last piece. Me. Then is we've got our two bits ready, and last piece is the spacer ring that goes in the, in the middle. So just push that on, he says, hopefully. Push the pen on. Now, if there was grain, you would want to try and line this up before you actually push it in. Let's just take that pen, retract the pen. If you were trying to line up grain, you would do it now before you actually close it together. Don't think there is really. That looks about right to me. And just close it up. One pen. That's beautiful. Very nice. Looks not too bad. Feels nice in your hand. Does it work? It does. Perfect. That's one done. So next is the uh, wooden pen, and this is the kit for it. Um, so this is going to be a silver pen, which will contrast nicely with that piece of wood. There's a clip. And the end piece. So we'll throw that a little bit. Which end do we want which? Let me see. There's not a lot of grain in this wood. It's just a, it's just a really nice sort of dense. And it has a nice... Oh, I'll turn that around there, I think. That's it. So we'll use this bit as the bottom because it's slightly thinner than the top. So we'll just hand fit that. I can't even get that to hand fit in there. Push that in there first. Um, what so, pen kits would you recommend, Brian? Because there's that many around. Well, uh, I can't really recommend anything. Uh, but what I will do is I'll get Mark uh, because and Pete because I know they've turned thousands of pens between them. I have turned, <coughs> this is my fourth pen ever, guys. So I can't really, and I've only ever turned slim lines. So. If you want to support British companies, the two that could spring to mind straight away would be... Oh, my fingers um, was in that. <laughs> Taylor's Murfield. British design, British manufactured, British company, and the other one would be Dave G at Pen Kits and Bits. Okay. So same detail with good this value, oh. Good value. Well, I'm there. Good variety of pen kits from yeah. Pen Kits and Bits. He also do project kits. Dan does as well at Taylor's Murfield. Um, you can buy the kits from Amazon, from eBay. Pen Kits Mall on Etsy, Beaufort Inc., Turner's Retreat, Axminster. So again, I'm just kind of creeping up on this. I think the question was more uh, of the types of pen kits. Craft. Like, you know, the yes, uh, whether it's a slim line, slim line or... Slim line, streamline, Sierras, Gatsby's, Amigas, Alphas. Kel Toys, 
There's, there's thousands of varieties of kits. One piece, two piece, roller ball, ballpoint, fountain pen, just a myriad. It's just down to your personal preference, right. what your customer wants. Um, if you find one you like that sells, stick with it. Right. Now, Barry's Wood Creations has said, very nice pen, Brian. Been thinking Thank about you, having a go at pen making. You've just convinced me to give it a go. Thanks. Well, I'm still not CJ Hobbies has uh, commented that he wouldn't have put the band in the resin one. Centre band. All right, okay. From the resin. Uh, I think I agree with that. Colin's just, just said he's got to use it. You've got to use it. But then, if you don't use the center band, how is it going to... Uh, Just pull the face. end off. Take the, Take the band off. Next. See if it'll go on. Tell them how are a lovely oh, pen. Oh, it does, eh? There you go. Yeah. All right. There you go. There you go. That's a good, yeah, that's a good idea. Just a little shiny gap there, I see. Like Doesn't look both. too bad. Both ways, so, Brian, yeah, I just because it's in the kit doesn't mean you've got to use it in that yeah, you instance. And it fits okay. It doesn't affect the operation of it anywhere, in any way at all. You see what you mean? So it just it just keeps the resin kind of flowing. Yeah. And if there was any sort of um, pattern in the resin, it would flow all the way through and that would look nice. Yeah, I get the idea. Good. Excellent. Thanks for that tip. Who was that said that? CJ. Um, CJ. CJ Sobbies. <coughs> All right. Cool. So I just need this to go in a little bit further. This pen will, won't actually go in. It won't uh, twist up. It's only coming out about a mil. And I'm almost right up to the little line there. So that just... No, I need to take that out first. Take that out first, yeah. Um, you did I say earlier... You that test fitting it is really important. Different manufacturers, the different tolerances on the transmissions. Yeah. That's why you have to test fit every single one. Yeah. Try that. So that was a good little lesson there, right away. That still has to come out a little bit further. Or maybe not. A little bit of wax that was on the end is kind of stuck there now, so just clean that up. You've been still in the chat. <laughs> Go on. Say that again, sorry. It's clean still in the chat. I just no, give us a tiny little fraction more. Ah, uh, just give us a tiny fraction more. I've got a question for you on Yorkshire Grip. Got you. So it's a bit of a footer, guys, trying to get this right. But uh, see, so you're better just taking your time now and getting it right. No, that's better. I'll do. So we're good to go there. Right, now over to the other end again. Leave that little brass band out or band. So, same thing again with the clip. I'll try and press for it first. Barry, I would say if you're going to go for a Barry's Wood Creations, asking any advice on the type of pen mandrel, um, look at the Axminster Evolution compression fit pen mandrel kit. Comes with the headstock mandrel. Um, the tailstock, mandrel saver, and all the bits you need. It's very versatile. But you also want to consider maybe going for, or having a look at, the turn between centers, bushings that uh, Taylor's Murfield sell. It's a much better method pen on the floor. of turning pins, turning between centers. It's more accurate. And the TBCs, 
the dam cells from Taylor's Murfield are universal. So you can use any bushings on those turn between centers. And it's also a cheaper option. So all you'd need is a 60 degree drive center, 60 degree live, and the two TPCs and the bushings for the pens that you want to turn. I'm just trying to get a decent picture on this for you guys. Joe's been kicked yeah. out. She's backstage. I'll kick her back in again just now in a second because you guys are coming back in now anyway. Uh, where is she? Come back in, Joe. Thank you. So I'll just leave, I'll just oh, that's the wrong screen. Put you guys on that one. I'll just leave, <laughs> leave you guys on the screen there. Um, there you go, guys. Two little pens. Made. Beautiful. Very, Very nice. nice. Not so just too to bad. admit my guilt, I did make pens. Oh, yeah. Quite happy with them. I, I can't make them anymore because I haven't got any kit, so. I'm quite happy with that, so. Can't show you, man, because I've sold them. Taking us an hour and 15 minutes to turn them. Um, but yesterday we spent a, a lot of time uh, preparing the blanks. So basically it comes like this. You get a pen, pen blank. And two little brass inserts. Put them onto your piece of wood. Put that out of way. Put them on a piece of wood. Mark it. Mark it on one end. I've got some lines drawn on here already, have I not? There we go. So just mark it on that end. And then mark it there. So you've got your two pieces. Cut it in the middle, cut the end off. Drill through the center. I you just put it on my left, drill it through the center both ends, and then score these with 120, you can't see that, score that with 120 sandpaper, you can see the little striations on it there. Yeah. Glue them in with epoxy resin. Super thick super glue would do the same job, uh, but it tends to uh, break out apparently. So there you are guys, that's a little uh, demo for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let's have a look here. Thanks very much to Mark for helping me, and uh, Right keeping us keeping us right, as is Pete. He's my these are my kind of two experts that kind of keep me right. <laughs> <laughs> take, take them glasses off. Thanks to all you guys for coming in to have a look and see um, and support my channel. I really do appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you know somebody who hasn't subscribed, get them to subscribe. That would be nice. <laughs> We're somewhere about five hundred and fifty ish um, subscriptions. We'd love to get to a thousand. Um, thanks to Joe for coming in and um, asking the questions that other wood turners wouldn't ask. That's Joe's purpose. And keeping Mark in order. And, and trying to keep Mark in order. That's almost mission impossible, but there you go. She does her best. <laughs> and so, oh. Colin. so Michelle has just arrived home. She, I see in the chat there. That's so the she, Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. There'll be a cup of tea coming shortly, <laughs> hopefully. There we go, guys. That's it for today. Um, Mark is back next Monday night. I know yep. that much. Um, and then who is on today? Thursday evening, anybody? No idea. Not uh, my knowledge. Not in my knowledge. JP said he might do a pop up, but we don't know. Okay. Um, tomorrow be, we Andy, have. Keith, Scott, JP. Don't know. Yeah, could could be anybody. Yeah. Just keep your eye on the channels, guys. If you've subscribed and you've rung your notification bell, you'll get it. Wayne is tomorrow. Um, and then SK Crafts tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Steve is on tomorrow night. So if you've got any questions on the resin blanks that Brian was turning today, that's the boy to ask. Steve's tomorrow and ask yeah. him tomorrow. Yeah, you can perfect. jump into his government or you could always email him at uh, SK Craft. Oh, that's all lowercase and craft is spelled with a K. Uh, at btinternet.com that's his email address if you want to email him um, and order some blanks of him that's it for today guys thanks very much it's goodbye from Mark bye Ron goodbye from Pete cheers all Robbo just uh, uh, mentioned that he didn't put the thumbs down ok it wasn't Robbo <laughs> <laughs> good man Robbo JP's just from coming Joe. Hi, JP hey JP Hi, you're JP. late because I'm just about to go and it's goodbye from me. Goodbye, folks. Bye. Cheers.